think I'll go with peanut oil because who didn't love that cartoon growing up? Nah, I changed my mind. Let's go canola oil because I canola imagine how delicious this is. Well, how about extra virgin olive oil? Oh yeah, why have 10 or 11 virgins when you can have 13, 14, or 15? No, 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 walnut oil, because who hasn't wanted their nuts on the wall somewhere along the line? Or maybe I'll go with sesame oil, that would be the bomb, because then every time I could open it, I would say, open sesame and that would do that all day, yes. Tell me, how do you choose your cooking oil? <laughs> well, I don't use cooking oil. Right, like I've been telling everybody, don't use cooking oil. Okay, next question, are you ready? Do you know the difference between saturated and unsaturated fat? I don't know what that is. Yet another uninformed member of society! I got more questions for you. Yes? Do you know what an omega-6 or an omega-3 fatty acid is? I don't know what that is. Holy lord! What are we gonna do with you? <laughs> what are we gonna do with you, child? Do you know what the ingredients are? Like what they're made out of? Um, they are made out of... Right here, where it says ingredients. Can you read that? Potato, starch, potato, flour, vegetable oil. Vegetable soy. oil. So it's Tomatoes telling you that there are three different kinds of, potentially three different kinds of oil. One of those three is in there, right? Yes. Do you care which one it is? Mm, not really. Did you say not really? No. You don't care which one it is? No. Do you know the differences? No. Do you think anybody should care? Um. Louder, please. I don't know if anyone should care. Bust it out, girlfriend. Tell the camera. I don't know if anyone should care. Yes, they should care. Are you kidding me? There's people dying because they don't know what cooking oil to use. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to walk into the grocery store, look at a litany of different cooking oils, and not know what to do, and not know what you're putting in your body, not know what you're getting yourself into because you are uninformed? No more! Say it with me. No more! No more! No more! No more! From now on! From now on! We will know! We will know! How to choose our cooking oils! How? To choose? To choose cooking oils! Our cooking oils! Our oils! By expanding! By expanding! Our knowledge base! Our knowledge base! About fats! About fats! Specifically unsaturated and saturated! <laughs> Specific. Say it right! <laughs> Unsaturated and saturated. Yes, and specifically omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids because it matters. <laughs> and Damn it, Jim! <laughs> it matters! Yeah! Are you Jim? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, no. no. Hey guys, welcome back to Doctor Talks. This is Dr. Alvaro, your favorite virtual cardiologist and nutrition guru. Today's topic, as you may have guessed, is cooking oils. Now this is a huge topic and it can be addressed from multiple perspectives. Me, being a heart doctor and nutrition guy, and not a chef, want to talk to you about cooking oils from the nutrition perspective. By the way, these aren't just oils that you cook with, these are also oils that you use as ingredients and that appear in massive amounts in the foods that you purchase. We've all been there, either trying to choose an oil to cook with or trying to interpret a nutrition label and thought, OMG, I might as well be flipping a coin or trying to read a foreign language. The deal is, there is simply no way to understand these oils without a basic understanding of dietary fats. Once you understand fats a little, then understanding cooking oils and oils that you eat becomes easy. All right, so fats. There are two basic kinds of fats available in our diet, and these are saturated and unsaturated fat. As it turns out, we actually need both of these in our diets. They are utilized for various necessary body functions, and both, both also play a role in cholesterol transport. Saturated fat, as it turns out, is a major component of low-density lipoprotein, Big word, also known as LDL, which your doctor calls the bad cholesterol. And unsaturated fat, on the other hand, is a major component of high density lipoprotein, or HDL, which your doctor calls the good cholesterol. 
Anyway, there's a huge amount of controversy brewing about how much fat should be in your diet, but two things, two, not four, two, are fairly clear. Number one, it should definitely not be zero, and number two, it shouldn't be more than 30% of your daily caloric intake. The most recent data and review of this data by expert panels suggests that about 28% of your daily caloric intake should be from fat. Of this 28%, two-thirds unsaturated, one-third saturated. So, for a daily intake of 2,000 calories, this translates into about, I'll do the math, 42 grams a day of unsaturated fat and 20 grams a day of saturated fat. Again, this is for a 2,000 calorie diet. Now, does that mean you can never have more than 20 gram, 21 grams of saturated fat in a day? No, of course not. It means that if one day you eat 30 or 40 grams, maybe the next day or two or three, keep it down to 10 or 15 grams. And yes, you should count them, at least at first. Your average daily saturated fat intake in a 2,000 calorie diet should be about 21 grams a day. Remember, your unsaturated fat target is double that, about 42 grams a day in the same 2,000 calorie diet. And as it turns out, the grams of fat in everything that you eat are available on the nutrition label. Or, if there's no nutrition label, you can Google the nutrition data with a smartphone that you and I always have available to us. Okay. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper into the unsaturated fat side of the universe by talking about two particular unsaturated fats. I know so much data, but live with it, you gotta learn. All right, two unsaturated fats, omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Both of these are essential polyunsaturated fatty acids. And what does that mean? An essential fatty acid is a fat that your body requires but can't make on its own, so you need to obtain it from your diet. Just like there are essential amino acids, so are there essential fatty acids. And polyunsaturated just refers to the actual chemical structure of these fats, which you and I don't really need to concern ourselves with. But why do we care about these two particular unsaturated fats? Fascinating to me, maybe to you. As it turns out, your body has very important balance points for many things. For example, your body has factors which help your blood clot, and simultaneously your body has factors which keep blood from clotting. And they are in a very, very delicate and stable balance. And if that balance is disturbed, you can become very ill from either too much bleeding or too much clotting. Well, another very important delicate balance in your body is the pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory balance. On the one hand, you need to be able to mount an inflammatory response to help you fight infection, for example. On the other hand, you need to be able to fight inflammation. And again, this balance is very delicate and complex. If you cannot mount an inflammatory response and fight infections, you're more apt to get sick and quite possibly die. And if you get overwhelmed with inflammation, you'll get sick and quite possibly die as well. You need this balance. The human body is an amazing machine at keeping these balances in check. So what do omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids have to do with all of this? I'm going to tell you. As it turns out, omega-6 fatty acids promote inflammation, and omega-3s are actually anti-inflammatory. And the human diet, since the inception of humans for hundreds of thousands of millions of years, has had a fairly stable balance between the intake of these two polyunsaturated fatty acids. The ratio, typically and traditionally, has been somewhere between 4 to 1 and 1 to 4, depending on if the ancestral tribe was living near an ocean or in the desert or in a jungle or what have you. However, never more than four times more of one over the other. Never. That said, in the modern era, the omega-6 to 3 ratio has dramatically been skewed towards the omega-6 side. In fact, in the United States, the average person gets somewhere between 15 to 30 times more omega-6 than omega-3. And this is the result, predominantly, of the widespread use of certain vegetable oils in our food that are extremely high in omega-6 content. We will go over which ones in a bit. So, 
What does six to three imbalance do? Then it shifts the scales to promote inflammation in our body's delicate balance that I just talked about. As it turns out, inflammation is also one of the key components to developing blockages in the arteries of the body, which in turn lead to heart attack and stroke, just like that bad cholesterol business. And heart attack and stroke are the number one killer of humans, number one by far in all high and middle income countries. Because high and middle income countries eat predominantly a modern westernized diet. I do think it's important to note that there is controversy exactly how this messed up 63 ratio is contributing to obesity and premature death, but the general thinking out there is that it is, at least in part, contributing. And it actually makes some physiologic sense, although a lot more research is being done and needs to be done. All that said, one of the things that is becoming abundantly clear as we learn more about fat and unsaturated fat and nutrition and omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids is that for sure way too much of any one thing is definitely bad for you and that a wide variety of nutrients in their natural form is probably the best way to eat. So it does make sense that having your 6 to 3 ratio so out of balance is probably not good, just like it makes sense that having way too much saturated fat is probably not good either. By the way, very important, the key to normalizing your 6 to 3 ratio is not to try to increase your omega-3 intake by 15 to 30 times, but rather to minimize your omega-6 intake. So. On this background, let's take a look at some of these cooking oils and eating oils and ingredient oils. Again, the best way to look at these from a nutrition perspective is, number one, how much of the fat content in the oil is saturated versus unsaturated fat, and number two, of the unsaturated fat that's in there, how much is omega-6 and how much is omega-3. When you can find an oil, when we can find an oil that is relatively low in saturated fat and relatively low in omega-6, then voila, we will have ourselves a winner. So let's take a look at a comparative chart. So this is one of my favorite of these charts as it is very simple to look at and interpret visually. To find it, all you have to do is Google image cooking oil comparison chart. The oils are ordered according to their saturated fat content, which is the red stripe. Next, you can see the blue stripe, which is the omega-6 polyunsaturated fat content. Then the little orange stripe, which is the omega-3 polyunsaturated fat content. And last is the yellow one, which is the omega-9 polyunsaturated fat content, which we're not gonna talk about as it is not an essential fatty acid and not necessary to analyze in terms of which oil should we be using or consuming. The beauty of this chart is that the two most important parameters are the first two, the red and the blue. So let's look at the saturated fat content. The first eight actually have reasonable amounts of saturated fat, whereas the last five, it starts to get outrageously high. So you can already guess I'm not a fan of any of the last five oils. However, let's talk a little more about coconut oil in a minute, since there's so much controversy with this particular oil. Now, it seems the first eight are acceptable based on their saturated fat content, so we'll have to move on to their omega-6 polyunsaturated fat content. As remember, we want to minimize this in an attempt to try to normalize our 6 to 3 ratio. You can see that counting from the top, numbers 4, 5, and 7 have outrageously high amounts of omega-6. These are sunflower, corn, and soybean oils. Now, what is interesting about these three particular oils? If you start reading the ingredients on the nutrition labels on your food, you will see that these three oils are by far, and I mean by far, the most commonly used oils in the food you consume. And why is that? The reason is that corn and soy and sunflower are mass produced as a result of crop, sub as a result of crop subsidies. And that is why the omega-6 to 3 ratio in the westernized diet is so far skewed toward the omega-6 side. So I personally never use these for cooking and I try to consume as little possible of these three oils in order to try to normalize my 6 to 3 ratio. How do I do this? Simple. I read nutrition labels. I carefully look at both the ingredients and the macronutrient profiles. And I will tell you, once you start doing this, you'll get a feel for just how much of these three oils appear in your food 
and accordingly how difficult it can be to decrease your omega-6 intake, omega intake, but it is definitely doable. Okay, so what oils does that leave us with? The final five, the finalists, canola, safflower, flaxseed, olive, and peanut oil. Peanut oil actually comes in last for me out of these five as it has the highest saturated fat and omega-6 content compared to the other four. So who's the winner? Well, I'm just a regular guy and a regular shopper. I'm not a chef, although I am a very discerning shopper at that, nutritionally speaking. But I've never really seen flaxseed or safflower oil on the shelf at the store. At least, they don't jump out at me. And it turns out I like the taste of olive oil. So in my cupboard, you will find extra virgin olive oil. But those other three are not bad choices. And really, peanut oil is not terrible either. All right, one final word about coconut oil. As promised, you can see from the chart that coconut oil has the highest percentage of saturated fat, 91%. However, there have been many claims that coconut oil is healthy for you. And how can that be? How do you reconcile that? I'll tell you what the rationale was and is. The rationale is the majority of the saturated fat in coconut oil is actually comprised of what is called MCTs or medium chain triglycerides, as opposed to the saturated fat in most other oils, which is comprised of long chain triglycerides. Now, long chain triglycerides are thought to be atherogenic. In other words, they promote atherosclerosis, which is what causes blockages in the arteries of the body, which lead to heart attack and stroke. Whereas MCTs, or medium chain triglycerides, are thought not to promote atherosclerosis and to even be potentially beneficial. However, ding, 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 however, as it turns out, two-thirds of the saturated fat in coconut oil is comprised of these medium-chain triglycerides, which leaves a whole another third, which is actually still a lot, being the bad saturated fat. Does that mean you should never, ever eat coconut oil? No, but I personally don't cook with it, and I try to minimize it in my diet, as I try to keep my average daily saturated fat intake to about 20 grams. So definitely don't be taking a teaspoon of coconut oil every day or twice a day because everybody says it's good for you. It's not. Understand it. Anyhow, there you have it. That is a lot to take in, but you can see that with a basic understanding of dietary fats and what they mean to your body and health and a basic understanding of what these various oils are comprised of, you, you and I can make some pretty good decisions about what kinds of oil to cook with and consume. Yay! All right, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I love talking to you. Love talking to you about this stuff. It means a lot to me to be able to educate my fellow humans. Don't forget, like and subscribe, and please leave comments and questions in the comment section as well as future topics that you would like me to go over. And even more importantly, do not forget, eat healthy, exercise, mountain bike and hug somebody. Bye bye you guys. See you later. Hasta la vista. Bye. Say there's my mom right there. That's my mom. <laughs> She's not on camera because she has more of a radio face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's up. Uh, thanks for listening. This is my little niece. Her name's Alvaro Et. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's our interview. Bye everybody. Wave. Bye. bye.